In the history book of science, there are many controversial chapters, but none is as controversial as the chapter of nuclear bombs. Some people call it a significant advancement in nuclear physics and a great achievement for science, while others call it the worst invention in human history. The development and deployment of these devastating weapons have left a permanent mark on our collective consciousness, forever altering the course of history and challenging humanity's moral and ethical boundaries. In this video, I am going to tell you about the history of nuclear bombs and how they work. The story of nuclear bombs began with the discovery of nuclear energy in the early 20th century. The discovery of nuclear energy emerged from the collective efforts of numerous scientists, building upon the works of Marie Curie, Albert Einstein and others. In the early 20th century, researchers such as Ernst Rutherford discovered that atoms possessed a nucleus at their core, comprised of positively charged protons and uncharged neutrons, with negatively charged electrons orbiting around it. Subsequent experiments revealed that certain isotopes of elements such as uranium and plutonium could undergo a process called nuclear fission, in which the nucleus of an atom splits into two smaller nuclei, releasing a significant amount of energy in the process. This release of energy demonstrated the potential for harnessing nuclear power for practical applications. Scientists realized that if a chain reaction could be achieved in which the energy released from one fission event triggered subsequent fission events, it could lead to a release of immense amount of energy in a short period. This understanding formed the basis for the development of nuclear reactors and eventually nuclear weapons. It was in the crucible of World War II that this scientific understanding would find its horrifying realization. The Manhattan Project A secret research undertaken by the United States aimed to harness the immense energy potential of atomic nuclei for military purposes. Led by brilliant minds such as J. Robert Oppenheimer, the project culminated in the successful testing of the world's first atomic bomb in July of 1945. But how powerful are nuclear bombs and why are they so terrifying? Nuclear bombs are incredibly powerful devices and their strength is commonly measured in terms of their explosive yield, which refers to the amount of energy released during the detonation. The yield is typically expressed in kilotons or megatons of TNT equivalent. To understand the strength of nuclear bombs, it's essential to grasp the underlying principle behind their operation. A nuclear detonation involves a highly complex and powerful process known as nuclear fission. This process occurs when the nucleus of an atom, typically a heavy element like uranium-235 or plutonium-239, splits into two smaller nuclei, releasing an immense amount of energy in the process. The key elements involved in a nuclear detonation are the fissile material, the critical mass and the chain reaction. Let's dive into the detailed steps of a nuclear detonation. For a nuclear detonation to occur, a sufficient amount of fissile material must be present. Fissile materials such as uranium-235 or plutonium-239 possess the unique property of being able to sustain a self-sustaining chain reaction. This critical mass is the minimum amount of fissile material required to sustain the chain reaction necessary for a nuclear explosion. The chain reaction in a nuclear bomb begins with the introduction of a neutron to the fissile material. Neutrons can be obtained from various sources, such as spontaneous radioactive decay or neutron generators. The goal is to initiate the reaction by providing enough neutrons to overcome the natural decay of the fissile material. When a fissile nucleus absorbs a neutron, it becomes unstable and splits into two smaller nuclei, releasing a large amount of energy. Additionally, multiple free neutrons are emitted during the process. This is known as nuclear fission. The released energy is in the form of kinetic energy, which causes the surrounding atoms to vibrate rapidly. The ejected neutrons from each fission event have the potential to collide with other fissile nuclei, initiating additional fission reactions. If a sufficient number of neutrons are produced and successfully initiated for the fission events, a self-sustaining chain reaction is achieved. The number of neutrons produced and the probability of the subsequent fission events determine the efficiency and yield of the nuclear bomb. 
To maximize the effects of a nuclear detonation, the fissile material is usually assembled into a supercritical mass. This means that the amount of fissile material present is greater than the critical mass required for a self-sustaining chain reaction. By achieving a supercritical mass, the number of fusion reactions can rapidly increase, leading to a more powerful explosion. In a nuclear bomb, the fissile material is surrounded by a complex assembly known as the implosion device. This device is designed to compress the fissile material into a denser state using conventional high explosive lenses or other compression mechanisms. The compression increases the density and pressure on the fissile material, enhancing the likelihood of achieving a supercritical state and a more efficient chain reaction. Once the fissile material reaches a supercritical state, the chain reaction rapidly escalates, with an exponential increase in the number of fusion events. This release of energy occurs almost instantaneously, leading to an explosive release of energy in the form of a powerful shock wave, intense heat and ionizing radiation. The energy released during a nuclear detonation takes various forms. The primary effects are the blast wave, heat and radiation. The blast wave results from the rapid expansion of superheated gases causing destructive force and shock waves that can level structures and cause widespread devastation. The intense heat generated can ignite fire over large areas and cause severe burns. Additionally, ionizing radiation such as gamma rays and neutrons can have severe short-term and long-term health effects on humans and the environment. The explosive yield of a nuclear bomb can vary significantly depending on its design, the amount and the type of fissile material used, and the efficiency of the detonation process. For instance, the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima named Little Boy had an estimated yield of around 15 kilotons of TNT equivalent. The bomb detonated over the city with an instant blast, leveling buildings, causing widespread destruction and resulting in an estimated 140,000 casualties. While only around 1.7% of the uranium-235 actually fissioned during the detonation. In comparison, modern nuclear weapons have substantially higher yields. For example, the most powerful nuclear bomb ever detonated, the Soviet Union's Sa Bomba, had an estimated yield of 50 megatons of TNT equivalent. However, it was deliberately reduced in yield from its maximum potential to limit the resulting radioactive fallout. In simple words, it was too powerful and dangerous to test at its maximum potential. Now that you know how a nuclear bomb works, let's observe its destruction. To make it easier to understand, I will break down the entire detonation process in three phases. The nuclear bomb has just been detonated. The chain reaction progresses at an incredibly fast rate, releasing an enormous amount of energy. The initial release of energy in the form of a rapidly expanding fireball occurs within microseconds after the detonation. This fireball is accompanied by an intense burst of light and heat. This initial explosion disintegrates anything and everything in its immediate radius. Humans, if near enough, are vaporized in fractions of a second. So quickly, in fact, that they would have absolutely no idea what happened to them. Houses, buildings, and any other structures are reduced to just troubles. The second phase follows the initial explosion. Milliseconds after the release of heat and energy, the shock wave is released. The shock wave is the most destructive part of a nuclear detonation. It can cause every glass in its proximity to shatter buildings, bridges, and other structures in a 1-2 to two km radius to collapse or severely damage them to say the least. It can also propel debris at high velocities, turning them into dangerous projectile, basically bullets. And if there are any humans inside its radius, it can cause their organs to rupture inside their body. The entire process of nuclear detonation is now complete. But the damage isn't over yet. The explosion has destroyed houses, buildings and other structures and has already vaporized thousands of people. But hundreds of thousands of more people injured and in need of serious medical help 
are now trapped in the wreckage of what used to be a city. And in the next few hours, thousands more will perish due to these injuries because help can't reach them in time or can't reach them at all. And one last thing, since the explosion has caused lots of debris and radioactive fallout high in the atmosphere, can even start to rain down radioactive ash making things significantly worse. The deployment of nuclear bombs has raised profound ethical questions about their use and impact. The immense destruction caused by these weapons, both in terms of immediate casualties and long-term environmental damage, has prompted widespread debate and concern. International efforts have been made to address these issues. The Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapon and the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty are crucial steps towards promoting global security and reducing the risk of nuclear conflict. In conclusion, the chapter on nuclear bombs in the history book of science is undoubtedly controversial. It serves as a reminder of humanity's capacity for scientific achievement and destruction. Understanding their history, technical aspects and ethical implications is vital for fostering responsible scientific progress and ensuring a safer future for generations to come.